Hello, welcome. Today I'm gonna teach you how to apply textures in Photoshop to any illustration. I brought my illustration, it's right here. I actually did this in Illustrator, but you can also do it in Photoshop if you want. If you're doing this in Photoshop, make sure that you're drawing each object or group of objects in a separate layer so that we can easily add textures to it later. What I'm doing is I am selecting the quick selection tool or shortcut W, making sure that I'm on my poster layer, which is not a problem because it's the only layer right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this little pink bridge. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm gonna go to window, brushes, and then I am gonna select a brush. What I really, really love right now, I've been using the Kyle Webster brushes. They're free. You just have to go on Photoshop and download them. I really like the dry media brushes. So I'm gonna just click this Kyle's dry media brush and play around with it. So I'm gonna make sure that this color is like slightly either darker or lighter than the actual object shade. And I'm gonna do that, yeah. And you can see right here, it has some like really beautiful textures. I like playing around with the shades and adding to it. This is just kind of one way to add texture. I can show you a different way. So I just kind of like to play around with it. You can also change up the opacity. That way there's a little bit more like depth and dimension to it. Now my um, dimensions for this poster are like super big because I eventually want to actually print it out in real life, which is also why the color mode is in CMYK. My brush might be moving a little bit slower, the sizes might be a little bit different depending on your aspect ratio, but yeah, I kind of like how this feels right now, so I'm gonna call it a day on this bridge. You can even name your layer if you're crazy like that. A pre-existing poster that you made in Illustrator or a different program and you're doing it my way, make sure you always kind of are back on this original layer when you're selecting the next object. So now I'm gonna select the kind of like hills. I'm just gonna select both of these at the same time because they're the same color and they're like part of the same group. And then we're gonna make a new layer and do the same thing. You can even experiment with different types of brushes. We've got a batter brush. That could be kind of interesting. So I'm playing around with this batter brush right here. Just adding a little bit of dimension to it. And it's coming out. Pretty exciting. Maybe splashes of like a more lighter tone here. And it's really subtle, but I do think it makes a difference. Cool, call that a day, call this hills, moving on. Okay, next I'm gonna go for the water. So this little blue, um, the quick selection tool I think is pretty accurate, which I really like. And we're gonna try like a different concept. Like what if, it's kind of wonky, but yeah. I've been super into the very hungry caterpillar type illustration with like heavy textures. I feel like children's book illustrations just really got it right. I'll show you a different way of applying textures. Say you did this poster in Photoshop and so you kind of have the layers already existing and you're not really using the quick selection tool. An alternative way of applying textures is taking this layer, I named it mountain, adding a layer above it, and then hovering between the top layer and your layer with your illustration on it. Press option until this little arrow in between shows up and then just click it and you've made a little clipping mask and you don't have to use the quick selection tool anymore. You can just draw directly on this layer and it will automatically only be limited to your illustration. Okay, I'm actually gonna turn on the other layer so I can like understand how it looks against everything. Really interesting brush. I feel like it'd be better if the aspect ratio of this poster wasn't so big, then the brush would be like showing up a lot more. Okay, 
What's great about this method is if you mess up, you can just kind of start again and toggle off instead of deleting the entire illustration or group. So I think a lot of people prefer to do it this way. For some reason, I'm just not one of those people. What I really like about children's illustrations is like nothing is ever really perfect. And so you have this kind of like playful hand-drawn style and if you mess up, it's like, I did it on purpose. You can also do a soft round default brush and then set it to dissolve and it has this nice little like noise. It works better when the poster itself is smaller. Or like a big one? Oh, that's interesting. I like that. I really like the dry media brushes the most. Sometimes you just have to be brave. Okay, we're done. That's it. That wasn't that bad. It took about like 20 minutes. This was it. I think I'm gonna add just like finishing textures. Okay, let's try bringing this guy on top, see what happens. So you just add the texture on top, change the blending mode, set it to like multiply or something. And you can see that it kind of changes up the colors and the finishing textures. That is the finished product. I hope you try it out for yourselves. The brushes are free if you have Photoshop, but I think there are also just like other free brushes that you can find online, like on Behance, or you can find brushes on Creative Market and stuff like that. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and have a good day.